Hello and welcome back to Nunley Math. I'm your host, Aaron Nunley. Thank you so much for joining us here today as we talk about solving exponential equations. Notice this is part B. Uh, in our previous lesson, we talked about how exponential equations can be solved by um, rewriting them so that the uh, exponents have common or like bases. I want to show you a creative alternative to doing that, um, but in order to show you that creative alternative, I do need to go back and remind you about something we learned in a previous unit, and that is solving systems. Um, notice I've given you a system of linear equations. I want to review with you real quick the three methods for solving a system, and I want to talk about how two of those methods can be implemented in order for us to solve, um, solve exponential equations. So, if you remember, there are three ways we can solve a system. The first is the addition method or linear combinations. When we use the addition method and linear combination, typically we do that with equations that are already in standard form or are pretty easy to put in standard form. As such, this is probably the worst of the three methods for us to use when solving this particular system. I'm going to go ahead and use it just so we can review it, but then I'm going to talk about the other two which are really more appropriate for this exact situation. Um, in order for us to use the addition method, these two equations need to be in standard form. That means I need to move this 3x from the right side of the equal sign to the left using the property of equality. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides and get this. Same thing down here, negative 7x needs to be moved to the other side using the property of equality I add 7x to both sides and I end up here. The addition method says let's add these two equations so that one of the variables disappear. In this case if I were to add negative 3x plus 7x that does not become 0x's. y plus y does not become 0 and 5 plus negative 15 does not become 0 either. So I have to transform one of these using the property of equality. I'm going to multiply through the first equation by negative 1 because when I do that I get 3x minus y equals negative 5. If I try and add that form of the equation to this second equation 3x plus 7x makes 10x but look at these y's they become a 0 and go away and then I just add negative 5 and negative 15 and I get 10x equals negative 20 which then I can solve and get x equals 2. That's really the most difficult part of this problem because once you know x, you can pick either of your equations, plug in your negative 2, and solve for y. Notice we get negative 2, negative 1 as our coordinate. Just like before, we can take the original equation, plug those values in, and simplify to prove that it's correct. Negative 2, negative 1 is the solution to this system. Now I probably should have gone back and plugged the um, our solution into these original equations but I didn't so we, that is what it is. The second method which is probably more appropriate to this circumstance is this. If you have two equations in a system and one of them has a variable that's by itself we're saying that the value or of the expression on the right is the same as that variable or in this case y has the same value as 3x plus 5. That means anywhere I see a y I can replace it with a 3x plus 5. For example right here I can take this y out replace it with a 3x plus 5 and create a new variable that is in a, or a new equation that's in a single variable. This equation should be relatively simple for you to solve. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that because that's not our focus. But notice that once again, just like in the previous problem, we got x was a negative 2. And just like the previous problem, I plug that negative 2 in and I solve for y. And just like in the previous problem, I could check that, but I'm not going to since I've already done it. You get the same solution because it is the same system, and we're just using a different approach to solving it. The last method, and the one we tend to frown upon in most situations, is the graphing method, where we just take this first linear equation, y equals 3x plus 5, and say, oh, the y-intercept is 5, and you're growing by 3 each time, which gives you this line. And then you graph the second equation, which says, oh, y equals negative 7x minus 15. Your y-intercept is negative 15. 
I just kind of estimated that. And you go down seven every time you go to the right, one. Now that doesn't fit, so instead I'm gonna go up seven every time I go backwards one, and I get this line. Notice once again, when we look at the intersection, they intersect at negative two, negative one, which is the same solution the other two methods gave us. Now, how does this apply to solving exponential equations? Well, if I were to give you this, 1 half to the x minus 1 equals 7. Notice the left side of this has an x in the exponent. Therefore, um, this is going to be an exponential equation. I want you to think of this, though. Instead of being a single equation, I want you to think back to the substitution method we used on the previous slide. In the substitution method, we said if you have two equations that uh, have a variable that is by itself, anywhere you see that variable, you can replace it with the equivalent value. I'm going to do the opposite of that here, and that may have sounded a little bit confusing, but it'll make sense when you see it. Instead of thinking of this as a single equation, I want you to think of this left side as an equation, and I want you to think of the right side as part of an equation. And we're going to split this left and right side into two separate equations, or into a system. This left side, half to the x minus 1, is going to be equal to y. This right side is also going to be equal to y. Notice what just happened. I used the substitution method for solving a system backwards. Instead of taking two equations in a system and putting them together, I took a single equation and split it into a system. Now, why on earth would I want to do that? Well, this is relatively complicated to solve. So instead, I'm going to split it into a system, and I'm going to use the graphing method to find the solution to this system. So I am going to have to back out of my slide for just a second here, and I'm actually going to shrink this screen down just a little bit so that you can see that I have my web browser open. My web browser is open to desmos.com. If you're not familiar with desmos.com, you really should check it out. Uh, it has a lot of neat algebra tools based around its graphing calculator software. I'm just going to click on Start Graphing. And you've got a graphing calculator here. Notice on the left side, you've got a place to type your equation. On the right side, you have a grid where your equation appears. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to type my first equation, this y equals 1 half to the x minus 1. y equals parentheses 1 half. I like how Desmos auto format sometimes. I am going to go ahead and use my arrow to click over since, uh, since I do already have parentheses here. And I'm going to put in an exponent. Now, you can't see my keystroke, but on my uh, keyboard, if I do shift and hit my 6, above the 6 on your keyboard, you're going to notice a little, uh, looks like a, almost like a pointed up arrow or two sides of a triangle, or some people call it a rooftop. That is your exponent key. And then I'm going to type in x minus 1 and I get the graph. Notice it is an exponential equation, so it does make that nice exponential curve. Then down here where it says 2, I'm going to click again. I'm going to type the second of my two equations. This one is y equals 7. Now I was having a little bit of issues with this because it does give you an interval uh, here. I don't think I need to type that in. You can see the line already appeared, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. The important thing is this. Right here where my two lines cross is the solution to that system. It's the point negative 1.807 comma 7, which means if I were to plug in over here on the left side of my PowerPoint a negative 1.807 807 in for x. Subtract 1 to it and then raise 1 half to that exponent, I would get a 7. Also, if I plug the 7 from my coordinate in here, 7 would equal itself. That tells me that in my original equation, the x would have a value of negative 1.807. 
that's the solution to this original problem. Um, in fact, if I were to go in, let me see if I can grab a text box here, cop, control copy, control V, I could come down here and I could say the solution to this problem is x equals negative 1.807, was that right? Let's come back over here and see, negative 1.807. Now, this would have been fairly difficult for us to figure out using a different method. So, um, you know, I, I would suggest uh, to you that this is going to be a whole lot faster if you have a graphing calculator available to you. Let's take the second equation, which would have been revealed uh, in a cool animation if we were still using the PowerPoint slideshow. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to split this into two equations as well. I'm going to make one of them y equals 3x, uh, 3 to the x plus 2. And then I'm going to make the second one y equals, there we go, x plus 1. I'm going to go ahead and make this one blue for you, just so it matches my other one. I'm also going to make this one red for you so it matches the other one. Notice I've taken that single exponential equation and I've split it into two parts. Let's see if we can find the solution to that one. y equals 3 exponent key, here again remember that's above the 6, to the x plus 2. And then your second equation is y equals x plus 1. When I graph those, do you notice anything interesting about that system? This one has no solutions. There are no values that I can stick in for x where we're going to have an intersection here. Or in other words, it is impossible for this equation to have any kind of a solution. Pretty cool, right? I would recommend taking a second, pausing the video, and trying the next one on your own. I am going to go ahead and do it uh, here in the video. Control, copy, and V. Uh, let's make this into y equals nice as four to the x minus three, and I'll make that blue for you, so it matches the pattern we came up with in the others. Let's see if I can get it nicely. There we go. Let's make that blue. And then I'm going to take this again, I'm going to make the second equation into y equals x plus 2, and let's stick that underneath there, and let's make it red. Just like before, I'm going to graph each of those separately, y equals 4, remember your exponent key is above the 6, this is to the x minus 3. In parentheses, nice graph there. The other was y equals x plus 2, nice graph there. Notice what happens here. You actually have two solutions. There are two x values that are going to make this true. So when I bring down my x equals, I would tell you that x can be either down here, negative 2, or x can be, what is it up here, 4.331. Either of those is going to make this statement true. Notice, uh, if I put in a negative 2, I get 4 to the negative 5th, which is 1 over what, 128, I don't know, something like that. And if I were to put... I'm just double checking something. If I were to put it in, uh, put in my four, it would work as well. I had a thought there was just double checking something for you. Um, I believe, yeah. Notice that's rounded off to negative two zero. That's what I was double checking for you. Um, it actually is slightly above zero. Remember, exponential functions are going to uh, approach that zero, but never ever quite reach it. It's a little bit of a zoom there. Last one, we're going to split this into two, one of them being y equals one-fourth to the x power. And the other one being y equals 
negative 2 minus 3. And here again, for the sake of consistency, I will make that one blue for you. I will make that one red for you. And we'll just graph them both and see what comes up. We have y equals parentheses 1 fourth exponent key to the x power okay, there we go exponent key to the x power and then we'll come down here fix that one there we go four and then we'll come down here and we're going to make this one into y equals negative 2x minus 3. Once again, it appears these have no solution. So we'll just copy and paste that. We'll say x has no real solutions. Hopefully that was helpful for you. There again, I know it was a little different hopping in and out of the PowerPoint, but um, I think allowing you to see the Desmos tool should have made this a whole lot simpler. If I did not have the Desmos tool, certainly there are some higher level math strategies you can use, mostly involving some Algebra 2 and maybe even a little bit of pre-calculus, but this is a nice method for us um, given our, uh, our limited capabilities. Um, as always, thank you so much for uh, working with us and following with us along today. Thank you for watching. Make sure you uh, like and subscribe leave us a comment in the comment section make sure those notifications are turned on so that you don't miss any of the upcoming videos from Nunley Math. You guys take care all right have a good day bye bye